folks, and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making potato cakes. Now, potato cakes are a very, very old recipe. They've been around for forever, and they are a leftover recipe, so they're a way of stretching what food you have. Um, when my kids were little, I can't even tell you how many times I came in and I picked up a couple extra kids and everybody was hungry and I went to fix dinner and either had no potatoes or had one or two potatoes. So I dig through the refrigerator and look for leftovers and they would usually get potato cakes. Um, they're super simple to make and they're very, very hard to mess up. I've got the basic ingredients over here and most of the time when I made them when the kids were little, I didn't add anything other than flour, milk, an egg, some salt, pepper, and pretty much always some onion powder just to give it extra flavor. Um, I will tell you this, you can stretch your potatoes quite a long way with this if you need to. I've got about three quarters of a cup of flour here and I've got a cup of milk I probably won't use all of it because you do want your batter pretty thick. But if you had to feed a lot of kids, you could take this same two cups of potatoes, and I've got about two cups of potatoes here, and you could add a cup and a half of flour, two eggs, and even more milk to stretch them farther and feed more people. But for today, we have about um, two cups of leftover cold potatoes and just go ahead and dump your flour in there. Now, I'm using self-rising flour. You can use plain flour and no baking soda, or you can use plain, or I'm sorry, baking powder, or you can use plain flour and add a little baking powder. I like mine a little bit fluffy, so I like a little leavening in them, so I do either use self-rising flour or I add a little bit of baking powder to it if I'm using plain flour. Give your egg a little bit of a beat um, before you throw it in there just to make it easier to mix up. And even though your leftover potatoes are seasoned with salt and pepper, you're going to want to add a little bit more. Because you've added the flour, you've added the egg, and you're going to add the milk. And this is just to taste. Um, I'm making these for me and Brett. Brett definitely likes more salt. He will like more salt than that even. And I'm gonna mix this up just a little bit. Oh, I forgot my onion powder. And I know some of you are seeing the chopped onion over here. Even if I add chopped onion to them, I still like a little bit of onion powder just because of the way the flavor mixes in there. And I'm probably using a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon. Um, if I wasn't doing anything else if I wasn't putting any other additives in it. I would put at least a teaspoon of onion powder in this. Because this is a leftover recipe and one of those things that you just can't hardly mess up, if for some reason you've got to make these and you don't have the egg, you can make them without the egg or people with uh, egg allergies you can make them without the egg. And I'm going to start with about half of this milk and see what I have here. How much milk you add is really going to depend on how thick your leftover potatoes are to start with. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. You want it to stick to the fork but still fall off of it or the spoon. You can mix them up with a fork or spoon or whatever because you do want them to spread out when you put them in your pan. And we're gonna fry these um, on about medium heat. You just wanna put enough oil in your pan to cover the bottom of the pan. You're, it's up to you what kind of oil you use to cook them in. I do like the grapeseed oil or corn oil for these. I use corn oil a lot for these just because that flavor is really good with the potatoes. You can also fry them in butter or some other fat that you like. Um, I usually do the corn oil, sometimes I'll do the butter or the grapeseed oil. Now what I have over here is a few of the limitless add-ins that you can do to these. 
And I told you this is a leftover recipe. This is a stretch your what food you have recipe. You can use leftover ham in these. Um, if you're trying to get sneak some vegetables in on your kids, you could chop up some cauliflower really fine and add it in this and the kids would not know it was in there. And you could get some vegetables in them that way. Um, what I'm doing here is kind of a, a loaded potato cake thing. Um, I've got some shredded cheddar cheese, some bacon crumbles, some finely chopped onions, and some finely chopped green peppers. Now, if I were making these for kids, I would only use what I have in this bowl right now. Or maybe add some cheese. Um, if it's older kids, you might get away with the bacon. And like I said, sneak some vegetables in there on them. But I'm going to start these just with the basic ones, and then I'm going to add this other stuff in. Now, I've already got my pan on, and uh, like I said, it's on medium heat. You can see my oil is hot, and it's starting to bubble here. And if you just use a regular, a regular tablespoon to scoop these out, that'll give you about the right size. Just a full tablespoon. And you don't want to overcrowd them. And you're going to let them fry mm, three, four minutes on each side, maybe a little longer. It kind of depends on how much milk you put in them, how wet they are. You can even make them without the milk at all and make them really thick and just press them out with the back of your spoon. But like I said, when I made them, I was always making them to stretch the food. So I would add the milk and um, stuff so that they would go farther. Uh, when you serve these, you can serve them just like this, you know, with nothing on them, just as a side dish. My kids like them with ketchup a lot. Um, if you're doing them for adults, sour cream is a good topping for them. Or if you're doing them, like I've got them over here with the bacon and the onions and the peppers, serve them with a little ranch dressing. That's really, really good too. And Brett likes them that way because he likes loaded baked potatoes and it kind of gives you that same flavor. When I started this video, I said it was a very old recipe and, and it was used to stretch your food. This recipe was widely used during the depression here. But I suspect it's probably a lot older than that. My guess is that this recipe probably goes back to around the potato famine in Ireland. And I know we have a few viewers in Ireland, so if you watch this video, maybe you could give us some insight into that if it really is that old. I said I suspect that's probably where the basic recipe originated. Um, another thing I used to do with these too when my kids were little Sometimes I would add uh, corn to it. Just make sure you drain the corn really well and mix a little corn in there. Especially if you're doing it all leftovers and you've got some leftover corn, you can get rid of it because leftover corn really isn't that good by itself. And you want to fry them until they're just about like that right there, nice and golden brown before you flip them. Um, they take about as long to cook as a pancake, and my kids used to call them potato pancakes. You can see they do rise up just a little bit as they cook, but not a whole lot because it was just self-rising flour, which doesn't have a ton of baking powder in it, but it has enough to make it rise, and I didn't use that much. Um, if you want them fluffier than this because you have so many potatoes in there and such a small amount of flour, you can add a little baking powder even with your self-rising flour, and it'll make them fluffier. Um, I'm going to add these ingredients one at a time because these are all actually different variations of the recipe. I'm going to start with just the chopped onions. Um, if you've got little kids, they will refuse to eat these, most little kids anyway, just over a few chopped onions. Whatever you add in, just stir it up.
Now, when you take them out, you do want to drain them on something, um, a rack or some paper towels or something. And these are done. They look really good. The second side actually looks a little bit better than the first side because my pan is the right temperature now. Okay, we'll put some in here with our onions. As you're cooking these two, you might have to add a little bit more oil um, because some of your oil is getting soaked up in your potato cakes. Keep an eye on the temperature of your pan. Um, make sure it doesn't get too hot because sometimes when you're frying something like this, the temperature will kind of creep up on you and they'll start to burn even though you don't change the way your stove is set. So you might have to turn them down just a little bit after you've cooked a pan or two. While these are frying, I want to take just a minute and thank everybody um, who is a part of this channel. And I want to tell you just how great our God is. Um, if you are in need of encouragement, in need of something to show you that God does answer prayers and that He is very real and that He cares about our daily lives. I want you to go back and look at the last few videos and some of the comments on them. Or if you're one of those people who are seeking God but you're just not quite sure, you're looking for something to show you that He's real, or maybe to, I, I don't know, there's a lot of people who just can't quite grasp the fact that the creator of the universe is interested in our lives. And I want to tell you that he really is. And when he's a part of your life, wonderful things can happen for you. Um, if you are not saved, you first have to be saved. Because Jesus said, no man comes to the Father but by me. So if you're not saved but you're seeking God, find you a Christian friend or a church who can lead you through the process of being saved or leave a comment on here and either me or somebody else who watches these videos, they will walk you through the steps. They will tell you what you need to know. They will give you the resources so that you can find that peace of forgiveness and you can receive eternal life. But, i got to tell you how great God is, okay? Um, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, I announced that I was going to be doing this full time. And a few hundred of you, or several hundred of you actually, have said that you are praying for this channel to succeed. And what God has done, because you have all prayed, is the last video that I uploaded... It received over 100,000 views in the first week that it was up. Now, I know that's not like phenomenal by YouTube standards. Maybe some people who are doubting this and watching this are going to be like 100,000 views. 100,000 views is a lot of views for a cooking show, and it's definitely a lot of views for our channel. On average, when we upload a video the first week, it gets 3,000 views. It went from that 3,000 to over 100,000. That's more than 10 times, okay? That is a huge increase. And not only did the views go up that much, but on average, our channel gains about 1,000 subscribers a month, around there. In the last week, we've gained 5,000 subscribers. So I want to welcome all of our new subscribers. Thank you very much. God really is interested in our lives. He really does care about what we're doing on a daily basis. He really does hear our prayers, and He really does answer them. And it's totally life-changing when you have that, when you are a part of that, when you know that God is involved in your life, when you know that God cares about you, when you know 
that there is an almighty God you can call on when you need something. And I really wish that everybody who hears this could find that. I mean, that's my prayer, is that everybody who hears this video, who watches this video, finds that they know what it's like to have an almighty, all-powerful creator of the universe, God as part of their life, who will answer their prayers, who will give them what they need. Maybe not everything you want. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that every prayer you pray, God is going to say, sure, here it is, because it doesn't work that way. But God will give you everything you need. And He will give you the desires of your heart, just like the Bible says that He will. Um, you know, it's... I'm standing here telling you to go back and look, and you can see the evidence. Faith is really believing in something that there is no proof of. And there is no proof, but there is a lot of evidence in life. And if you are truly seeking God and you look, you will find enough evidence to believe without a shadow of a doubt that He is real. So thank you all so very much for your prayers. I really can't tell you what they mean, um, how important they are, but those of you who are praying, you know what they mean and you know how important they are and you know how powerful they are. So thank you so very much. Welcome to all of our new subscribers. Um, I hope you all stick around for a very, very long time, and I know some of you have been watching these videos for five years now. Um, some of you have been with us since that first silly video. Okay, we've got another panful ready to come out. The onions don't change it that much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add my cheese. Should have done that while I was talking. You do want to make sure you get the cheese stirred up good because you don't really want it on your bare pan. Probably going to have to add a little more oil before I do the next pan full. And my pan is getting hot, so I'm going to turn it down just a tiny bit. I'm going to have to quit making so many or I'm going to run out of batter before I get all my ingredients added. But you can see something that happens here. Every time you add something else to this, it kind of increases how much you have. So you're stretching that two cups of potatoes so that it will feed more people. And that's kind of the point of this recipe. That's how it came into existence, like I said, was to stretch what you had. So. Anything at all that will go with potatoes, you can throw in here. Um, you can do like some chopped up beef if you've got a little bit of leftover roast and some peas and do like a shepherd's pie flavor. Um, that's really good in here. Uh, gosh, just anything. If it'll go with potatoes, you can throw it in there. We'll do our peppers next. So we've got the onions, the peppers, the cheese. And so far, this is vegetarian. So if you're looking for a really good vegetarian side dish, maybe even, you know, if you're doing a big dinner and you have a vegetarian coming, this could almost be a meal because it's got the cheese in it for protein, and it's got the peppers and the onions in it. The cheese makes it a little more runny um, as it melts. And it sticks to your spatula. It'll also stick to your pan, so you're going to have to kind of loosen these up a little bit as they cook. As far as amounts of stuff you add in here, it's really kind of up to you and your taste. Um, like the cheese, I added almost two cups of shredded cheese. 
but I had already cooked almost half of my batter. Um, my kids would eat it if it was 80% cheese. Like I said, the cheese does make it runnier. It um, makes it break apart easier. So depending on what kind of texture you want, you might not want to add that much cheese. Um, you might want to do two cups in a whole batch, um, which is what I had there, or maybe even cut it down to a cup of cheese in a whole batch. Um, and the same way with the peppers and the onions and stuff. Um, just It's based on what you like, or based on how much you have if you're doing leftover stuff. What I had was about half a pepper and half an onion that I had chopped up really fine. Um, now I would used a lot of it before I put the peppers in there, so there's quite a few peppers in there. You might not like that many. You may even want more, but there's not really any hard and fast rules as to how much you would add. Um, where I put the cheese in here, the, my batter looks a little bit thicker, but once the cheese melts, you know, the potato cakes are not as thick. And I added a little oil in here, but where all my cheese is melting, it has oil in it, so it looks like I've added a lot of oil. The cheese also really changes the color and the texture. Um, you can see over here, these are the ones with the onion, and these are the plain ones. It changed a little bit even with the onions, but the color really changed after I added the cheese. Okay, now these are going to be really soft because of the cheese. Don't worry about that. Just be careful when you take them out. They will stiffen back up as the cheese cools just a little bit. Be careful with them because they'll break pretty easy. And now we're going to do some with our peppers. Now up to this point, you're good with kids. Maybe not with the onions. Um, kids definitely aren't going to like the peppers though. But with the peppers, you're still, you've got a vegetarian side dish. And I'm going to add some bacon. Now I'm not going to put all these bacon crumbles in here because I've cooked so much of this. Um, it would just be too much. And I'll have a few with the bacon. Now with the bacon crumbles or um, if you put some little chopped pieces of chopped ham in there or something. These would make a really good lunch just all by themselves. And I've done stuff like that a lot. It's a hot lunch and it's something different. You know, when you're looking for something different for lunch sometimes, this is a good option uh, with the bacon or with some ham or even doing, like I said, the um, shepherd's pie version where you put some little pieces of chopped up roast and maybe some peas in here. Okay, these here with the peppers are done now, and like I said, once you add the cheese, they get really, really soft and hard to handle, but once that cheese starts to cool down, they firm back up and take more of the same texture that um, we had with the ones that just had the onions or the plain ones. But you have to be real careful when you're taking them out of the pan and flipping them and stuff if you have the cheese in them. Okay, now we're going to do our bacon ones. And I'm just going to finish these up in this pan. And you can see how much thicker my batter is getting as I add more stuff to it. You could actually add a little more milk. Um, but with all that cheese in there, I wouldn't, if you were, if you didn't have the cheese and you were adding other stuff, 
Um, you would want a little bit more milk probably because those are kind of stiff, but when that cheese melts, they are not going to be kind of stiff. They're going to be just like this. What I was talking about with the texture of the cheese, these that just came out of the pan, they're very tender, but these that we did before that just had the cheese and the onions in them, you can actually lift them up kind of like the other ones that we did. They're a little thinner than the ones that don't have the cheese in them because when the cheese melts it makes the whole batter spread out more. But they still have pretty much that exact same texture. And you can see the difference in the color. These were the plain ones. Then we added the onions and they got a little more brown. And then once we added the cheese they had this kind of orange tint to them. And then now these with the peppers. You can see the pretty little green peppers in there. And I can probably get these off the napkin now. But the peppers add a lot of color to them and make them really pretty. Something that you can serve that will add a little color to your meal as a side dish. Mm. These bacon ones are coming out absolutely perfect. That's good because they're the ones that Brett's going to like the most. So. There's his lunch, and he's probably way past hungry. I've been working on this video for a while, and I told him we would have these for lunch. Now, we've done these five different ways in this video, and the variety that you can do with potato cakes is literally only limited by your imagination and leftover shelf in your refrigerator. Um, and just the plain potato cakes with the flour and the milk and the salt and the pepper and a little onion powder if you want. You don't even have to add that. Uh, they're great just like that. And kids like them with ketchup. Adults like them with sour cream. You don't have to go to all this extra trouble. But if you want something different for lunch, add a little meat and cheese and some peppers and onions to it. Um, if you want a really pretty side dish, you can just do them with the peppers and the onions and leave out the cheese, or you can do them with the peppers and the onions and the cheese. Add a little cheese to them for kids, make them special. Um, my kids would probably tell you they didn't get cheese in them very much because usually when I made them it was because I needed to go grocery shopping and they had eaten all the potatoes and all the cheese and all of everything else and the leftover shelf was the only thing to eat in the refrigerator. But, it, like I said, it's literally only limited by your imagination. And I would like to hear um, from some people in Ireland uh, if this recipe is that old, because I think it probably is, or at least get your ideas about it, what you think about how old it is. Um, my granny, she called them arse taters. And she spoke with that real thick Irish mountain accent. And for years I thought an arse tater was some kind of special potato. And as I got older I realized that she was saying Irish potatoes. But she'd call them arse taters. That kind of reminds me of a comment that I got on one of my older videos. Somebody commented and they said, she ain't no real hillbilly. She's making all that up. Nobody calls them taters. <laughs> well, it's truly a struggle for me to say the word potato because I call them taters my whole life. And like I said, I was pretty old before I figured out what an arse tater was. But I think these are done. Oops. I And look what I have done. I had a perfect potato pancake there and I messed it up getting it out of the pan. The cheese does make them sticky and if it gets on your spatula like this it makes it very hard to get it out of the pan. So I'll clean that lump off before you get another one out. So whether you're looking for something different for lunch and you want to add in some bacon or ham or something or you're just trying to feed a bunch of hungry kids with some leftover mashed potatoes, tater cakes are a great recipe and it's very versatile. Add anything to it you want and any amount to it you want. 
I really hope you give these a try. It's a classic and it never stops being delicious. I appreciate you joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. I love all your comments. I'm so grateful for all your prayers and all your encouragement. Welcome all of our new people. And before you leave, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you haven't already. And remember to put God first. We'll see y'all again soon.